President Obama wrapped up his uh, summer car trip this week with a stop at a Ford plant in Chicago. As during earlier visits to GM and Chrysler plants, he was touting the comeback of the U.S. auto industry. There are a lot of folks who are ready to write off the American auto industry, who thought we should just have walked away from it. Some still think that today, but you know what? That's not how you build a better future. That's not how you build a better America. We don't give up. The United States does not quit. We always compete. That's what we do. And that's what we're doing with the U.S. auto industry. So how are the big three automakers faring in this struggling economy? Let's check in with auto industry expert Lauren Fix. And obviously the president was trying to send a political message there that those bailouts for the car companies worked. Obviously not in the case of Ford. They were the one that didn't take the bailout money. Uh, but he's been trying to make this case over the last several weeks. So, uh, Lauren, well, how do you see it? Are the big three making a comeback? Yeah, actually they are, and there's a reason for each one. When it comes to, we'll start with Chrysler, the reason that their sales are up about 5% is because huge incentives. They haven't put out too many new brands. They've got a lot of products still in the pipeline. And so they figured we'll put out huge incentives, get rid of these cars before we start bringing Fiats and Lancias and Alfa Romeos. Those are going to be your first coming uh, to this country by the end of the year. You'll start seeing some 2011 models. And we have a graphic here showing just how sales are doing in 2010. Ford up 3.3 percent, GM up 6.4 percent. And I was surprised to see, and then Toyota and Honda not doing so well, down 2 percent and 3 percent. But I was surprised to see how well GM is doing over in China. Uh, several of their cars are getting rated better by Consumer Reports, uh, better than ever before. And so, I mean, even General Motors, which you can't even you can't even buy their stock on the New York Stock Exchange right now. Uh, I mean, th this this company is turning itself around, or so it seems. Well, right, right. part of it is there's only four brand lines left. They've either dissolved them or sold them off or attempted to sell them off. So what we've got left is Buick, which is a huge product in China. They just love Buicks. It's like the goal is to own a Buick, which is great for the, for the U.S. auto manufacturer. The, yeah, but you know what? If you've driven a Regal lately or looked at a lacrosse, tell you what, they put together a really good product. Uh, even, you know, their Equinox, and you're talking about the Chevrolet line, they've done a great job. The Camaro was a hot pick. I mean, you're looking at cars that are really developed, and the Cadillac line is huge. The Cadillac line is just growing and growing. Um, and so GMC, if you haven't driven a new Arcadia, I, I've driven them all, and I have to say, GM has really, really struggled, but they've come back strong. But the interesting one, the one I really am impressed with, is Ford. They didn't take any government bailout. Alan Mulally is the genius behind it all with redeveloping the Taurus, looking at the Fusion, the Fiesta, bringing that in from Europe. Number one selling car, still the F-Series pickup and the Super Duty trucks. So Ford yeah. is up huge in sales because they've really put their minds to it. And I think so, it's the product. It's really got to be the product because that's what the consumers are driving. Yeah, and, and so, Lauren, I, you know, I guess this is never going to settle the debate, right, whether or not the bailout helped or hurt because you have, you have GM and Chrysler doing better, you have GM doing gangbusters, and Ford, which didn't take the bailout money, also doing well. Uh -huh. What's your take on it? Well, I was against the bailout. I, well, I'm totally against the bailout because I think that when you're talking about the U.S. economy and how we do things, is consumers will buy things as they need things. If the economy is down, nothing is, was being sold. And as the economy starts to turn around very, very slowly, people start to either need cars, which is the reason for the car sales because there are leases that are coming due, or on the other hand, people just want to buy a car because they can afford to. That's why you're seeing the sales. But then look at companies like in the Asian uh, manufacturers like Kia, sales are up 20%. Wow. That's huge. Hyundai sales are up almost as much. Nissan sales are up. Those are a reason. But then for some reason, other brands like Suzuki have taken the biggest hit in sales. So again, consumers are out driving. They're checking crash test ratings. They're checking fuel economy. And you know what? We're still buying SUVs. That's why the new Ford Explorer came out. I mean, believe it or yeah. not, people still want those vehicles. This is the U.S. We drive what we want. We don't drive what we're told to drive. That's true. Very, very good point there. Lauren Fix, we could go. I could yeah. go on all day yeah. talking about cars. We didn't even get to talk about the Absolutely. Vault and all those electric There's cars so out there. I would have loved to do that. But uh, good talking to you. Lauren Fix, uh, uh, an auto expert. Next time. Exactly. Uh, talking about how the big three are making a big comeback. Thanks for your time. Appreciate it.